Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Dave Lucas and today we're going to be walking and working through module 5. The reason I said walking is because that's kind of what we're doing, making a journey. Remember that we're using as a baseline guide the Concise Public Speaking Handbook and in this particular set of videos we're using the 5th edition. So if you have access to that, fine. If you don't, a lot of this you can find online but also it's important to follow along as we do this here on the board. Today especially, we'd like to welcome you because I know that this is an important moment for you as we begin to talk about how you implement delivery in a public speaking situation. And as for me, I've been doing this since I was in the eighth grade. I still remember the first speech I gave on honeybees. I can remember the points, I remember the intro and the conclusion. I'll spare you that experience right now and let you know that we're talking about how you deliver an effective speech. Here's where we split the difference between those who try to do a good job and those who can do a good job. I want you to first of all notice we have several ways in which you can deliver a speech. Methods of delivery include manuscript, memorized, impromptu, and extemporaneous. What I'm doing for you is an extemporaneous presentation. But it may be that you'll end up having to do a memorized speech or a manuscript. So let's talk about manuscript first. A manuscript is what often novice speakers in class try to do. And you can't do it. But a memorized speech is one, or a manuscript speech is one which is written out word for word completely that you present. Now applications for this speech would include really technical issues, scientific situations, government reports, and so forth. It may sound very boring to you, but if you get something wrong in a scientific explanation, if you get a formula incorrect or make a mistake, it could ruin the entire project. And so, in some instances, the manuscript presentation is called for, but that's later because they're very hard to do. Many of you who try to write out your speech and then read it never look up at the audience. It's very difficult to maintain good eye contact good expression, good gestures, good facial expression with a manuscript speech. That comes later. When you're a scientist, when you're a big PhD going to a conference and presenting something very, very, very technical, you'll need to use the manuscript. But if you learn to do these others first, you'll be able to do that. The next one is a memorized speech. Now that speech is where you take a manuscript and memorize it word for word. First of all, this speech always sounds like it's memorized, <laughs> because it is. It sounds very stilted, very stale, it's very difficult to, to play off audience reactions and so forth because you've got it by rote memory what's coming next. The real fear for this speech is that you forget something. If you have to do a memorized speech, something word for word, and you forget, go back to the last two or three lines that you remember and start again. That should kickstart your memory. But sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you're stuck. And especially if you didn't take your notes up with you, you'll never regain where you were. Even if you have your notes, often it's very difficult to find out where you are in those notes. So remember, these are for later. In a technical situation or when you really need to just keep looking out at the audience and have something memorized, you can do a short a uh, commemoration or a memorabilia side of, a sort of speech this way if you wish. I prefer the last one, but let's go on to impromptu next. Impromptu speech is where someone will start saying, speech, speech, speech. If you win an award or somebody gives you something, something happens and it's uh, serendipitous at best, you get up and give a little speech. Well, if you'll remember the rules of how you do a speech, then you should be able to pull this impromptu off without much problem. Have some sort of an introduction, do the point one or two, and then have some sort of conclusion. You can do that with just about any topic, especially if it's something that you know. Sometimes at a dinner that you're having um, for some big uh, celebration, they may ask you to get up and say a few words. That's an impromptu speech. They didn't say they wanted you to give a speech, but they just call you out of the audience to make some observations. The last speech, though, is the best one, extemporaneous. That's what I'm doing now. I don't have everything all written out. And although I have this outline memorized in a way, I don't have everything all written out memorized that I want to say. So what you want to do in an extemporaneous speech is like we're doing in class or like you're doing 
um, you know, for, for these exercises is to make sure that you have those points there. You can look down at your three by five card and you can look back up and look at the audience and it seems natural. It seems straight out of your heart, right out of your mind. It's casual, it's relaxed. It's not real formal, nor stiff, nor stilted. This extemporaneous speech is the best way to go almost everywhere, especially now in our culture. Live videos and all of this are very extemporaneous. You can have a good plan, nothing wrong with that, and still go live on a video and make a presentation. So we have manuscript memorized, impromptu and extemporaneous, this being right now in our culture the very best way to do it, unless you're in some sort of a very, very technical or scientific uh, conference or situation. Now let's move on to nonverbal communication because that's what I'm using. Nonverbal communication includes eye contact, gestures, movement, posture, face, and your attire. All of these work together to do nonverbal. Nonverbal communication is believed more than verbal communication. That's why you see a politician who says, I'm not a crook. And if his nonverbal doesn't match up what he's saying, you probably think he or she is a crook. Look, people believe nonverbal more. And so if your eyes are shifting all the time, even if you're a really good speaker and your eyes are always shifting, people think you have something to hide. You've got to get the nonverbal to match the verbal. First of all, eye contact. Don't buy into this thing where people say, look at the corners of the room. Watch. I'm looking at the corner of the room. You know that I'm not looking at you. You need to look your audience right in the eye. Find people who seem to be pleasant and have pleasant faces and seem to be responding and keep looking at them. Someone over here, someone over there, someone over here. Keep shifting that back and forth, but look at the audience as you speak. Don't look in one direction with somebody who you like a lot. The audience will notice. So eye contact is critical. Don't look up in the air. Don't look down. Don't keep reading your notes. Look at the audience. Next includes gestures. Now your gestures need to be out and open. Not closed in. Not this. Not this. Not this. Not this. Not all this. Out. Open. Lead with your wrists as you make a gesture. Always make sure your gestures are arcs and circles. Never straight lines, ever. It looks like you're doing that dance, you know. Try to make all of those gestures very out, open, and very, very comfortable and relaxed. Sort of a casual way which to say, I want to go over here. I'm going to go over there. Look up there. Look down here. That's the way in which you really use these hands to talk along with what you're saying. Next is movement. Now, a lot of novice students will do this. Rock back and forth. And that's not good. That's not what you want. When I'm talking about movement, movement is sort of enhances transition. Let's say I'm giving you a speech about dogs. Three different breeds of dog. We have the Husky. We have the French Poodle. And we have the Basset Hound. Well, you see what I did there? I made those movements triggers or signposts that I was changing my points of the speech. So that's how you can make movement very, very positive and purposeful. But you can't sway back and forth, or rock back and forth, or pace back and forth. That's not what we're talking about, movement. Movement helps enhance the presentation. Practice in front of a mirror. Don't be afraid to go over this with your audiences before you finally record your speech. Your posture is critical too. If you put your hands in your pockets, you slump your shoulders. You want to keep your hands out of your pockets, keep them out and open, Keep your shoulders squared back. Look at your audience. Don't tilt your head. Don't rock back on one foot or the other. Everybody has a tendency to get these feet too far apart and do all this stuff. Don't do that. Try to think of, of you making a good presentation. If you put one foot forward, then you can lean forward when you want to make a point. And if you're surprised or shocked, you can lean back. That's the way to make posture work for you. And don't forget about the face. The face provides the smile, the kind of experiences and the kinds of emotions we want to convey to the public, to our speaking audience. And finally, dress. The rule, always be dressed a little better than your audience. Don't give a speech in short pants and an old dirty t-shirt. Don't give a speech 
and something that looks like you've just crawled out of bed. If you're going to give a speech, you must be dressed as well as or better than your audience. I like to wear a tie. I like to wear a shirt. You may just wear a nice looking polo, or, but you have to think about the audience. How are they going to be dressed? And you must dress a little better than them. We always need to speak correctly. Now you have to watch your grammar. You have to watch all of these contractions that we normally use. I remember so much uh, uh, years ago, I have a friend who came here from Mexico and was living there in Southern Ohio and he heard people say this question. It yet? On to? Meaning, have you eaten yet? Do you want to? But he couldn't understand what they were saying. And often we think that these contractions and shortcuts and, and uh, all of this jargon is okay to use, but it's not okay to use in a more formal setting. When you're giving a speech, it's a touch more formal. So don't be so casual that your speech becomes commonplace and destroyed. Lift it up a little bit. Heightened conversation. A little louder than a normal conversation and a little bit more formal. Not so formal that you're doing a manuscript. That's not what I'm talking about. Not so formal that you're using words you don't know what they mean, but a little more formal that has you speaking correctly with the right verbs. For example, you can't say, I seen that. That's improper grammar. And it shows that you, even though you might have education, you didn't listen in English class. I have seen that. I saw that. That's correct. That happens all the time, especially in the tri-state area. Ohio, Southern Ohio, West Virginia, and in Kentucky. We have to be very, very careful about the way we speak. Now, it doesn't mean you have to be, Hello, I'm here to give a speech. That's not what we're talking about. But at least think about the way you speak. Have your audience be open and truthful with you. If they catch something, it'll help you. And finally... When you do a speech, often you'll want to do presentational aids. You can't use little papers and little posters that nobody can see. So the rule for this is provide something clean and nice looking, professional looking. Provide something large enough to see. Provide something that you've practiced with so you know it's going to work and that if something goes wrong, and it will, that you'll know how to recover from it. If you're going to use a PowerPoint or any kind of slides at all projected on the wall or screen, make sure that you keep looking at the audience while you refer to that picture or screen. Notice, watch. I keep coming back to you because you're important. Never turn your back on the audience. If you're going to write something out on a board for them, like I've done here, what did I do? I wrote it before I began the speech. And so, there we go. Great methods of delivery, manuscript memorized, impromptu, and extemporaneous is what we're doing. Nonverbal communication is believed more than verbal. Verbal should be correct and clean, good grammar and speech. And finally, if you're using presentational aids, and you should, then you need to make sure they're clean, bright, powerful, big enough for us to see, and they enhance your speech. I'm Dr. Dave Lucas. This is Module 5. And you are having fun in public speaking.